generation leaf. So in Tokyo, we really wanted to show what's going to be the brother for the leaf in the near future. So we did the IMX. It's a crossover. So we take the Nissan Intelligent Mobility and we give it a more uh, SUV presence, a higher ground clearance, but still this aesthetic of uh, technology, aerodynamics, but all in a more uh, strong presence. What's happening in the next generation of EV platforms is yes, the tires and the wheels are getting a little bit bigger. Also, the cabin is moving more forward and the, the front volume is shrinking because of the EV motors are generally small and the wheelbases can be long and uh, because that's a, these are the benefits that we are reaching with the, the new platform and then when you open the doors it has a super flat floor that creates more of a living room feeling which works super well with the autonomous driving so when you do the autonomous driving two level where the steering wheel collapses in and you take a more relaxed posture uh, the super flat floor helps you feel more like uh, uh, living room experience. There's two realities that are happening. It makes it a little difficult, but it's exciting at the same time. We're able to do more. So we, we can make cars with hands off and all of this autonomous driving and we, can, we don't need the side mirror now with the camera technology and the ability to stitch cameras together. So the cameras in the B pillar with the cameras in the fender can create this amazingly wide view that are much better than a side view mirror. But the regulations and governments are always a little bit slower than technology. So, um, but I think eventually, especially when the, the safety benefits of technology are shown, uh, the governments usually fall. <laughs> CES now has become the, the stop right before Detroit. Uh, because here, that all the things that are inside these concept cars are actually here uh, with uh, our suppliers, the screen technology, the autonomous driving technology, the brain activity technologies, that all of these things that are merging the, the human with the automobile is on display here at CES. Because when you start looking at even the, the way we can do with headlamp technologies, it's a smart adapter headlamps where the signature is also a low beam, fundamentally changes the face construction. Also aerodynamics, because we don't have an engine, we can take the wind and it goes between the wheel and the body, and it changes fundamentally the architecture of the car. And then also the, the very sleek upper with the glass. The, some things are just fundamental engineering improvements. Our engineers are able to make a seamless car. And when you add seamlessness and technology of EV and autonomous driving, uh, it's a revolution for the car industry. At the end of the day, with an EV, the battle is how long between the charges. So the aluminum is the easy one, but also other kind of materials, especially with the interior. A lot of people assume that the metal part is the heaviest, but actually all the when you add up all the components, all the little plastic parts and the seats and all of these, there's a lot of weight that uh, advances in material sciences can help dramatically. So what's happening is that, you know, electric vehicles are actually very passionate when you drive them. I know the idea seems uh, environmental, but the actual feeling, especially next generation cars, this has more torque than a GTR. So for those people who really love driving, you know, the, they shouldn't necessarily turn their back <laughs> on EV until they drive it. And, uh, but yeah, I, I mean, I personally love cars. I love designing cars. And, uh, but I don't find much difference between designing the next GTR, wink, wink, and uh, <laughs> designing an electric car. I, I, I love both of them. Today we're, we're showing the brain to vehicle, which is actually a, a technology that's developed to that anticipates the kind of reaction of the human brain even before they're aware. And uh, then also in here, there's a lot of autonomous drive technology that we have, and uh, the seats move, and also all the screens, uh, 300, uh, 180 degree screens. Uh, so all the things here at CCS are living inside. Of of IMX. And here's where you see one of the biggest things where the battery, our engineers were able to package all the batteries within this space, which allowed us to have a completely flat floor. So you have the feeling it's part automobile, but it's also part living room because when you're in hands off mode, 
you have this ability to feel more in a lounge environment where you're talking to the person next to you and you're still watching the road and you're still paying attention but um, you're also doing other things you know when I took over from Shiro uh, my, my boss uh, I don't know if I because I am I'm, I'm not Japanese I'm a Latin guy as you know uh, I had this feeling that I want to do a, my research I've been in the company 30 years yeah. but uh, we started this exercise globally all my students had to find the DNA of Japan and some interesting things we discovered something called Ma Ma is the mastery of the empty space and I, I to be honest I love this so how the mastery of the empty space means how can you make openness so powerful by the very selective use of elements not everywhere just powerful elements so this open feeling but then the focus is really on this technology area so we're, we're concentrating our energy into certain area and the rest is open and sense of cocoon and harmony that's how it is I mean in Japanese culture they believe that what you know it's almost a, like the Ryokan but also imagine a museum space it's completely white, white floors everywhere, but there's a, something red, a small thing in the middle, that you make sure that object is so strong that the empty space has a beauty because of that object. And that's what's happening here. And in, in Detroit, we show another one, uh, Infinity and a Nissan one, completely different one. And uh, so you'll see how we are incorporating uh, Japanese DNA for Infinity, and Nissan is different. For Nissan side, because I'm in love with uh, the period when uh, the center of government moved from Kyoto to Tokyo. It created a cultural revolution, a kind of Bauhaus modernism. Okay. So I feel this is Nissan, where because for the Japanese people 400 years ago, designed objects was available to the middle class, to everyone. And I, I feel this kind of uh, alignment with our company and that. So this, it's called Ikina. Uh, I, I feel that this feeling of such high level of design that's very minimal but very powerful is uh, Ikina sense. But it's beautiful I and mean, even the very minimal, it's a, the beauty of my, my Japanese team is how they can do something intensely that looks like it was done lightly. It's, 